Hey guys, hopefully everybody's doing good today. Um, LT4, so hopefully you guys are cruising right along. And LT4 has to deal with projectiles, projectile motion. I'm not going to put a date because I don't know when you're going to be getting into this. I'm guessing Friday or Monday, but um, I, I don't know. So um, LT4 says I can apply the independence. That's an important word here. So independence of X and Y components of motion to projectiles both on Earth and in space. So it goes back to that universal idea. All right, so there's a lot of words we got to break apart here. So the first one is independence. Think about what it means to be independent, right? You don't, you don't depend on something else, which means when we deal with X and Y, that is going to be horizontal and vertical motion, okay? Because there's usually an X and Y component that work together to create a curved path. Um, we have to figure out what these projectiles are, and then we have to think about what would be different if gravity wasn't as we know it to be. All right, so kind of some loaded stuff here. So do some brainstorming first. Talk to Ms. Klein about what a projectile is or is not. So use your phone's power for good versus evil right now even, and maybe Google, or use your Chromebook. Google a projectile, come up with some examples, hit the pause button on me for a minute, and um, figure out what those are. All right, so hopefully what you figured out for a projectile is that it's an object moving through the air or space. It can't be something where, like a bowling ball rolling along the alley. That's not a projectile because it has that support force, that normal force pushing up on it. All right. Technically in the air, I know there's air drag, but we just kind of tend to ignore that. So it has to be something moving through the air. Um, you guys are going to watch a Mythbusters clip today dealing with a bullet fired and a bullet dropped. So actually a bullet is an example of a projectile. Maybe a missile. Maybe a baseball. All right. Something like that. Could be a satellite if you have direct TV or dish net. That thing's rotating around the earth at the exact same rate that we are to keep that satellite out there aimed above your house, essentially. All right, so that would be another example of a projectile. But um, for right now, to keep it in the simplest form, we look at projectiles and we talk about their trajectory as parabolic. And you guys have dealt with parabolas in math class. Okay, so hopefully we know what a parabola is, right? Something kind of like that. All right. Um, but, whoops, you can't see that chicken scratch. But trajectory, just think of that as that's like the path. Okay, so like a parabolic path. And so how, how do we create that? And you will eventually do a simulation. I don't know if it will be today or next class period where you're gonna play around with and actually see them work together. So for right now, you just have to have a little bit of trust and know that it is created because the X, which is the horizontal, so the X and Y components of motion work together. Okay, so you need them both to create it. Yeah, they don't depend on each other, but they're both there. All right, so. Let's look at just a horizontal component first. So we just call that the X component. Make sure you know that's left and right. Okay, so think on a graph, like the X axis. And let's do this. So we're gonna have a person, a very happy person, and they're gonna be standing on the edge of a cliff. And we're gonna pretend at first that there's no gravity, all right? So they're gonna take this little ball and they're gonna throw it off this cliff. So let's just say this thing starts here and then it's gonna go, once they leave that person's hand, there's no more force on it, it would go equal intervals in equal amounts of time. So this would be in a zero gravity environment. You throw a ball off a cliff, it just keeps going. It wouldn't go to the ground. 
The only thing that would that can bring something down is gravity. Gravity is the only thing that acts in the up and down the Y way. So once this goes, if we ignore air drag, it's going to keep right on going forever. So maybe this is after one second, two seconds, three, four, whatever. Um, if you just drop a ball off a cliff, so let's just say we drop this thing. We know in that first second, so this is with gravity now. This is zero gravity. Now we're going to have it with gravity. So we just drop a ball. It's only going to fall a little bit in that first second, maybe from there to there. We know on Earth, if gravity is about 10, okay, so if we have gravity is about 10 meters per second square, we know in the second, the second second, it will drop farther. So maybe it comes down to here. And then the third one, it's going to drop farther yet. The fourth one, it would keep going, but I didn't plan very well, so I guess my, my dot would be down here. Hopefully what you're starting to see, if you drew this probably better than I did, you kind of got half of a parabola here. Okay, This is creating that parabolic motion. So the x component, this part, means there's no horizontal acceleration. There's no horizontal. Remember, acceleration is a change in velocity or a change in speed. It doesn't do that because we are going to ignore air drag. We're going to ignore all types of friction. So therefore, once it leaves your hand, it's gone. So the Y component, the only thing that we're going to worry about here is gravity. And we already know that that's about 10, which is where you get this shape from. So in one second, it falls about 10 meters. In the second second, it falls an additional 20. In the third second, it falls an additional 30, so like 50 total. All right, so that's, that, that's where you're seeing that bigger gap. Now... This is obviously just, just setting the stage for some fancy stuff. The, the big takeaways right now is that the X component is left and right. The Y component is up and down. They both help to create that curve, that, par that parabolic path, but they don't depend on each other. So what is about to happen is you're going to watch a Mythbusters. And what they are wondering is if you have a bullet, all right, so here's a... I, that does not look like a bullet. I don't know. You guys are used to me. But um, if you have a bullet, maybe it's a dart gun bullet. That might be better. And you shoot it. Okay, so we're going to fire it this way. At the exact same moment, somebody is going to drop one. They're just going to drop like a little dart gun bullet or something like that from the exact same height. So one is going to be fired. Okay, we know if a bullet gets fired, it's going to go this way. The other one is just going to be dropped from the same height at the exact same moment. Okay, so the exact same moment that this one is, leaves the barrel of the gun, this one is going to be dropped. So the question is, will a fired or dropped bullet hit the ground first? Okay, think about that. We're, a lot of you hunt. So... You, you would have to picture it being like a level shot out the window of a blind. So it couldn't be something like we're up in a tree blind and you're shooting down. That, that isn't going to work. But if you have a gun perfectly level and that, that bullet's not going to hit a darn thing. And so you've got your buddy sitting next to you. When you're, that bullet leaves your gun, he's going to drop or she's going to drop a bullet from that exact same height. Which one's going to hit the ground first? The fired bullet? The drop bullet? Same time, what do you think? All right, and like take a stand on this. Don't be, don't be a wimp. Don't, don't sit on the fence on this one. But uh, Ms. Klein's going to show the video, and uh, hopefully once you see the outcome, you can understand the Y part. Okay, you can see this X and Y component working together. All right, have a good one, guys.